What if I told you hobbits were real? Not the kind with magic rings or second breakfast, but actual tiny humans no taller than an eight-year-old who walked upright, hunted prey, and built tools. And they didn't live in fairy tales. They lived on a remote Indonesian island just 50,000 years ago. This is the real story of Homo floresiensis, the smallest human species ever. It all started in 2003 inside a limestone cave on the remote Indonesian island of Flores. A team of Australian and Indonesian archaeologists discovered something unbelievable. Buried in the cave floor was a nearly complete skeleton of an adult human. But this was no ordinary skeleton. It was barely a meter tall with a skull the size of a grapefruit. They called her LB1. But the world came to know her by another name, the Hobbit. What followed was one of the most astonishing scientific debates of the 21st century. Had we just discovered an ancient human with a medical condition or a completely unknown species? As more bones emerged from the cave, at least 15 individuals in total, it became clear. These weren't diseased modern humans. They were something else entirely. Enter Homo floresiensis a distant cousin in the human family tree. Just three foot six inches tall with long arms, flat feet, no chin, and brow ridges that made them look primitive. But here's the twist. They weren't just tiny versions of us. They were radically different. Their shoulder joints, feet, and even their wrist bones were more like ancient hominins than homo sapiens. Their brains were tiny, about 380 cubic centimeters. That's smaller than a chimpanzee's, and yet, they used fire, crafted stone tools, and hunted giant animals. Clearly, size wasn't everything. How does a human species get that small? The answer lies in something called island dwarfism, or insular dwarfism, a well-documented evolutionary phenomenon. When large mammals become isolated on islands with limited food and space, natural selection favors smaller body sizes, Less body means fewer calories needed. And Homo floresiensis wasn't alone. On Flora's dwarf elephants called stegodons shrank from five tons down to just over one. At the same time, other species did the opposite. Rats grew to the size of rabbits. A massive carnivorous stork stalked the forest. And Komodo dragons, descendants of larger mainland reptiles, remained apex predators. This island was a crucible of evolution a place where big became small, small became big, and humans adapted to survive. But here's a mystery that still puzzles scientists. How did these hobbits get to Flores in the first place? The island was never connected to the mainland. Even during ice ages, deep ocean trenches kept it isolated. That means someone had to cross the sea. Did their ancestors raft here, accidentally drift during a storm? Either way, it suggests cognitive skills we never imagined for early humans. Some researchers argue they descended from Homo erectus, an early human known for spreading far and wide. Others suggest an even older ancestor, like Australopithecus, which would completely rewrite what we know about early migration. Unfortunately, we don't have DNA to prove either theory. So for now, Homo floresiensis remains an enigma. Let's go back to those tiny brains. How could such a small-brained human behave like us? Turns out brain size isn't everything. What matters more is how the brain is wired. And Homo floresiensis had a surprisingly modern brain shape, especially in regions linked to problem solving. Archaeologists found evidence of advanced stone tools, perforators, blades, microblades, and signs of cooperative hunting. That's intelligence in action. It forces us to rethink the whole bigger brain equals smarter species equation. Because in this case, the smallest humans may have punched far above their weight. But life on Flores wasn't easy. Imagine being 55 pounds and living among giant flesh-eating storks, massive vultures, and 10-foot-long Komodo dragons, whose venom prevents blood clotting and causes shock. Add saltwater crocodiles and spitting cobras to the list. Homo floresiensis remains were discovered in a cave, Liang Bua, on the island of Flores. That doesn't prove they live primarily in caves, but it strongly suggests they use them for shelter. 
at least part of the time. These dark, humid spaces carved into limestone cliffs may have offered safety, a buffer between them and the relentless dangers outside. The entrances could be hidden, scents obscured, and fires controlled to avoid detection by predators. They may have used smoke to keep out insects and stacked rocks to block off passages. Inside, they likely slept in groups, perhaps not a permanent home, but a refuge when the forest became too risky. Flores was a place where time moved differently, a realm sealed off from the wider world. And in that surreal environment, Homo floresiensis endured. Not for a generation, not for a few centuries, but for nearly a million years. They hunted, scavenged, and raised young in the shadows of giants. They adapted to heat, hunger, and horror, and somehow made it work. It wasn't strength or size that kept them alive. It was awareness, adaptability, caution, a kind of quiet resilience built over countless generations. And then we arrived. Modern humans reached Southeast Asia around 50,000 years ago, the same time Homo floresiensis disappears from the fossil record. Coincidence? Probably not. We may have outcompeted them for resources, introduced new diseases, or even wiped them out directly. Whatever the case, the hobbits of Flores, who had endured isolation, predators, and scarcity for hundreds of thousands of years, were gone. Homo floresiensis challenges everything we thought we knew about human evolution. They were small, yes, but they were resilient, clever, and adapted to a world that seemed designed to destroy them. They remind us that humanity isn't defined by size, power, or even intelligence alone. It's about adaptability, creativity, the will to survive, and in that sense, the hobbits of floors were as human as any of us.